I have on the line today students from Sierra Middle School, the principal of Sierra Middle School, and one of our assistant principals. Welcome to the show, everybody. It's so nice to have you here today. Thanks for having us. I just have some questions for you guys today. Just want to open up conversations to hear about things that are happening and how you've prepared and gotten through remote learning. And now that we are prepped to go back to school in hybrid situation, what are your thoughts about that? And how will you continue to be successful in that environment? So tell me a little bit about yourself and, and what has been working this year. Who wants to start? Hi, I'm Ella Palme. Basically, I've been in the school district since kindergarten, and my experiences so far with online learning has been really good, and it's really like nice and easy and relaxed. My name is Rainier Lapidus, and I like being able to manage my own time, and that's been really easy to do with remote learning. My name is Molly, um, and one thing, I learn my own way. I don't like learn like others, so I have to focus on two things at once. I can't like be focusing on one thing, I mostly have to mold that task. So tell me what hasn't worked about remote learning? Is there anything that has been challenging? I would say the hardest thing is having to troubleshoot with um, technology issues because sometimes my mic won't work or my camera was turning off and it's sometimes hard to troubleshoot through those issues. I kind of agree. I think that Wi-Fi doesn't really work very well because like sometimes it comes in and out. And then also there's like a whole bunch of distractions that can get people distracted. Like there are different things like our phones that we wouldn't have in school. I actually haven't had too bad of an experience. Like my screen's frozen every now and then, but then like my brother's at school. So I really don't have too many distractions either. So I've actually had a good experience with it. I haven't had any troubles. Anything to add from the parent perspective? So I didn't mention that Ms. Palme is both assistant principal at Sierra Middle School, but also a parent here today as well. So wearing two hats. You know, I think one of the things that's been interesting and maybe it is a challenge um, just with the e-learning school is it's not really a school, like a, a physical building school. And I'm so used to having some sort of a connection with a building and kind of knowing the people there. And I think that has been helpful in supporting Ella all along the way. So. That's the one thing that's just felt a little absent just because we have this virtual school and there's really no place that I, I kind of can stop in and say hi to people and, and, and see what's going on. But Ella's been doing fantastic in spite of that. I'll just add to that. That is one thing that I actually worried about a little bit for Molly. She's a very social person and having that social contact with people. I was a little worried about the impacts, but she seems to have navigated it well. And what I love about the the online learning environment is that the teachers navigate it well with the students and there's always dialogue going on and I'm working at home too, right? So I can hear the calls in the background. I'm on a call in another room, she's on her classroom calls and it's just the dialogue is positive and, and reinforcing to the, the students and I think that's fantastic. The other thing that I was a little worried about was the pet interference. We have the beasts who seem to, to always be connected, but she's managed that really well. Between the two of us, I think we've managed that pretty well um, in, in keeping the animals in check and, and allowing her to stay focused. So that's been good. That's great. You talked about it a little bit already just with the dogs and, and being at home, but what does your learning space look like? How are you making sure that you can focus on school and how might your parents have supported you with being ready for school every day? I wake up at a decent time so that I can get myself prepared. And then I work in my room with the door closed so that I have a space where I can just focus on everything. And I use my computer and then I have a notebook next to me to take notes on stuff and to put in what I need to do for the day. This helps me. I sit in my beanbag chair and I work on my lap, but my cat will sit next to me because she's like my best friend. <laughs> And she helps me a lot. She's like my companion, so. Little moral support, right? Yes. For me, my desk is pretty cleared and like, I need a lot of room to work because as I work, it gets more messier. So if I start messy, then it just messes with my head. And then kind of like Molly, every now and then I'll let my dog upstairs. And because if I'm getting stressed, she like calms me down. And one of the things we learned is a as a family, um, because not only was Ella doing school at home, but for a while then we were doing work at home as well, both her and myself, her dad. 
And then even at one point, her little brother, all four of us were at home <laughs> doing school and work. And we have a room that is dedicated, that has a giant desk in it. It's got all of our supplies, but we actually learned kind of needed to separate Ella. Like she needed her own space because it was just so loud and there was so much going on. And it was not exactly what we expected. Like, you know, you kind of hear like you should have your kiddo around. You should be keeping an eye on them. We're lucky that she's actually pretty driven herself. So we were able to just, we bought her a desk in her room. I got her all set up there. She's got a new computer there. Um, but really she did need that space where we don't have all that interruption for her and her classes. Like my mom said, I'm like, I'm very independent when it comes to school. So I can't have like other people like over my shoulder helping me while I'm trying to work. So that's what I like is I have like my own independent workspace. I'm really impressed that you guys know what works for you. And it sounds like you talked about your, your pets as part of your stress relievers. So how do you continue to be motivated? And how do you think you might continue to be motivated as we go back to school and, and we have this change in the way that we've been doing things? I get up early, I work out, and it tends to help me study better, it takes away some of the stress, it eliminates it, and it helps me work a little better. So. I think getting up early and working out during school days and like in person and online helps a lot. Yeah, I, I would add that I think she kept the same routine, whether we were in school or at home, she kept that same routine. And I think that's really helped, especially in that morning focus ritual, I guess, um, in terms of getting her brain ready to, to focus on the day. Uh, I wish I had that level of motivation, but she's <laughs> been on it and, and it's helped her, I think. So unlike Molly, I really cannot get up in the morning. I will lay in bed for as long as I have to. But um, most of the time I force myself up and then I make sure that I eat before class. And then on class, something that helps me like stay on track is I'll keep my camera on. That way then like I know that people can see me. Let's talk about class and your teachers and kind of the style of online learning. Is there anything that they're doing that helps your engagement or some fun activities? How are you staying engaged on the other side, knowing that you're on the behind a computer most of the time? My LA teacher at the very end of the semester last year, um, we were able to play a game. And then my math teacher keeps it like really fun and entertaining because he's very humorous. So he cracks a lot of jokes during our math lessons. So that's just very entertaining in general. <laughs> My teachers are really fun. They often do in put little games or fun educational lessons into what they do to make learning something that would normally be a lecture, something that's not necessarily super entertaining in person, something that's really entertaining when we're just seeing each other through a camera. So Rainier and I have the same teachers. I think that all of our teachers, they do that. But also after class, sometimes uh, we talk to the teachers or I'll talk to the teachers and it's like better to become like friends with my teachers. One thing that I love as a parent, you know, again, I'm in the other room on my own conference calls on screen at the same time, but I'm often hearing the teachers have dialogues with the individual students, um, even just at the first of the call or at the tail end of the, the class. And I think the direct interaction, I think that does a lot for all of these guys. And I think that's invaluable to see that and to hear that happening. To me, it makes me feel better as a parent, just hearing them talk directly to individual students. The relationship building is, is still so important, if not even more, right? Something I wanna add is that my teachers, like if they see that I'm like excelling at like a specific assignment, they'll be like, okay, you can leave the meet and go work on it like yourself. Cause then they also like know that I'm very independent. And it's just nice when teachers kind of know you. Well, let's talk about friends. I know it's harder to see your friends right now. And you mentioned Molly's super social, and I'm guessing many of the girls on the call are. So how are you compensating? How are you dealing with that? Just how has it been? I'm playing for a basketball team that a lot of the girls go to Sierra, so I get to spend time with them through that way. And then also sometimes on calls or after calls, my friends and I will FaceTime each other and just talk, but also have that opportunity to discuss how our days went. And I think that's really important. Rainier and I are on the same basketball team and we do 
go on the calls together, and we call each other after school and work on stuff together. So I stay involved with my friends that way too. Yeah, and me and Molly are on the same softball team, and so I get to see her and then all the rest of my teammates at practice, and then I FaceTime my friends daily. What advice do you have for other students, other families who might not be thriving as well as you are? We've heard tons of challenges. Do you have advice for those students? Kids who just aren't thriving as much, my advice is really just focus on your work and then once you have those breaks, like we have like a lunch break, don't work on anything during your lunch break unless you're really behind because that's really your time to like reset your head and then just take a step back. I would agree with Ella. Always go into it with a positive mindset and then also make sure that you're, you have time to get your schoolwork done, but you also have time for yourself because that's really important and that can have a huge effect on how you're choosing to do work. This is our last year of middle school. I would tell them to work hard and try and focus. There's also like a million things that they could be doing other than school and just like face their camera up at the ceiling and not even try. So I think that putting your face like into the camera and like not trying to focus on other things would be perfect. I actually have a little advice from a parent perspective to other parents. I'm always surprised at how many parents don't realize this, but there is an infinite campus parent portal app that you can put on your phone. And I think that it's really, really important that parents do put that on their phone and then turn the notifications on because you're gonna get notifications then about your kiddos attendance. So it's gonna let you know when they're not attending or they're tardy. Um, It just immediately sends it to you. And it's also gonna let you know when work is turned in or not turned in for your kiddos. And you know, my advice to parents is, that is not an invasion of privacy. You are the parent. You you have every right to know what is going on in those classrooms. So I would say definitely get that on your phone and turn on those notifications. I wholeheartedly agree. I have it on, on my phone. I get the notifications on my watch. I love to see throughout the day when things are getting turned in, the great work that they're doing. You can see that throughout the day and it's just a way of staying in touch with everything that's going on. And I think we should, that's our role, right? So. I have one more advice to parents and to students. To parents is just know, like I said, I'm very independent. So know if your kid's very independent because you don't want to be like over your child's shoulder because that could also mess with their head. But then to students who aren't attending, attend class because it makes life a lot easier and then you don't have to deal with like attendance records or anything like that. I just want to point out that teachers are just here to help. They're just as tired as we are. Well spoken and great advice from all of you. I I need to remember some of the advice that you guys gave for myself, like stopping to eat lunch and taking a minute to relax and breathe. I think that's great advice. Is there anything else that you want to share today that I didn't ask you about? So, So there is one other little piece of advice I would recommend for parents who are in the position of having students learning from home. I can't advocate enough for them to take ownership of the communication with the teacher, take ownership of following through and asking questions to your teacher if you don't quite understand something, because that's that's really the only way it's going to come through. And they can't know in this environment if you're if something's not coming through, if they're not being understood. So it's really important for the kids to do that and own it and parents to support that. You hit the nail on the head. I mean, we're all in it together and we've got to depend on each other. And part of that is reaching out to each other. Something else that I've been doing is that on Mondays and Wednesdays, either I go to my friend's house or she comes over here and we're on the same team on online and we'll do work together, which just makes it a lot more fun too and just makes my school experience a lot more enjoyable. I would say something that our school's doing that I really like is the check-ins from the counselors, which is really helping my mental health and me just feeling like I have someone to talk to. And it's really nice just being able to, if I'm having a rough day, to say what's making it a rough day or if I'm having a good day to make it feel like I'm celebrating having a good day. That's great to hear, Rainier. I'd love to hear a little bit more about that. Do they call every day? What does that check-in look like? It's usually a Google form with like, a scale of one to 10 on how you're doing. And then if you're having a bad day, you can request that they reach out to you to further like make you feel better or have a conversation with you to figure out what's going on. Thank you for sharing that. That's great. So on Fridays, we don't have anything except for like, I want to say like 25 minute advisement or something like that. 
through the week, you can schedule office hours with them. And that's what that Friday is for. But it's not just for getting help with work. Um, like my LA teacher said, she's always like, if you need someone just to come talk to you, you can come get an office hour with me and we'll just talk. So our school is doing this thing called fun days where you like dress up as someone or something. I think that is really good to get involved with. They did something like that around the holidays, which was really cool. And then there's this thing called Sources of Strength, and I think it's at everyone's school, but I'm in it, and it's, like, really helpful because you get to play games. We make campaigns for, like, mental health and, like, your sources wheel, so it helps a lot if you get involved with that. And that was Sources of Strength? Yes. I love to hear all of the great things that are continuing to go on at the school, and continuing to engage everybody and build that culture and just positivity. That's fantastic. We are coming to the end of our time together. And again, I just wanna thank you guys. I am so impressed to hear from you all. It's been, like I said, I have some advice to walk away with today. And I hope that our listeners and watchers, our vidcast watchers, take away some nuggets of advice today too. Thank you for being here. It was so great to meet all of you. Thank, thank you. you. Thank you.